Our next guest is on a mission to make life in the low country look and feel as beautiful as possible. And she says that she sells happy. Today, we introduce you to Caroline Rhodes of Rhodes Boutique and Rhodes Home and Gift. This is Charleston Women Podcast, where you can meet like-minded, strong, independent, professional, and inspiring local women. This is Charleston Women Podcast. And now I would like to welcome to the Charleston Women Podcast, Caroline Rhodes, who is the owner of Rhodes Boutique and Rhodes Home and Gift. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Erin. Thank you for having me. I'm, yes. I'm I mean, without a doubt, I think most people know you're my favorite store in town. <laughs> I, I get asked <laughs> frequently if I work there and I just say, yeah, I know. I, I know everybody. <laughs> we, we would have you every yes, day. Yes. Yes. Um, so we have, I'm just so excited to, you know, sit down because so many of us know the store and love the store. So we're going to talk about that. For those who've never been, we want to tell you how great you are. But also, I am really interested in having a conversation with you and how you kind of did a career pivot and started this whole thing from kind of left field, if you will. So let's just start with Rhodes Boutique and Home and Gift for someone who's never been there. Tell us what it is that you offer. Well, when you walk in the door of Rose Boutique, you're going to be welcome to, uh, I say plethora, and it really is um, uh, a, a wonderful, beautiful curated collection of ladies' apparel, uh, gifts that um, are for la- ladies, young young girls, babies, men, uh, and accessories and whatever else we think would be fun. Uh, it's a boutique. And then when you walk four doors down um, to Rhodes Home and Gift, you will find uh, the things that you would expect to find. Um, Things for your home, home decor, Mm -hmm. fine linens for table beds, uh, accents, Mm -hmm. uh, wedding registry, um, uh, a lot of gifts, a lot of beautiful, beautiful books. Coffee table books are such a big, big thing. Uh, And everyone thought the books were going away. They're not. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, at any rate, um, but the most important thing that you will find when you mm-hmm. come into my stores uh, are the, the staff. They're absolutely yeah. wonderful. Yeah. I, I see here it says, um, we sell happy, which yeah. I, I love that. It just simplifies everything. And I think compared to you know a lot of stores when you go in nowadays, not that you're ignored, but you just don't get the attention that you get at Rhodes Boutique. From the moment you walk in, someone from your staff is saying, hello, welcoming you, helping you. Is that really the difference that you're trying to curate? It is. I don't like the self-serve at all. I won't yeah. do it at the grocery store. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but I am very much customer service oriented. We are uh, in the stores, I, when I'm interviewing an employee or potential employee, I say we we sell happy. When yeah. you walk yeah. in the door, you are um, you as an employee are here to try and make the customers happy. They walk in for a reason; they have a need, and we try to make them happy. Are we always going to be able to do that? No. Yeah. So yeah. yes, it's a little it's a little silly to say that, but. But it is, it makes you happy to have something new to wear, to put on your table, to look at that beautiful uh, shelf that you just decorated or, or it makes you happy to give someone a gift that they enjoy. Yeah. We're so happy. Yeah. Who does the buying? You were just talking about, you know, being on a call yesterday, you know, buying some products. You guys have such a wide assortment of stuff, such beautiful stuff. Um, some things that we can only find at Rhodes Boutique here in the Low Country. Who has this eye that is pulling everything together? Is it a large team? Is it Wiley? Who's doing it all? It's a collective team. Yeah. I'm um, almost always in- include it um, there, yeah. but sometimes I I do allow them to uh, uh, travel on their own. Uh, Wiley and Franny mostly. Uh, Franny's the manager of Rhodes Home and Gift, mm-hmm. and Wiley's my assistant manager. Uh, they they go to the home shows now, and yeah. I don't I don't attend those. But for the um, for apparel and gift, mm-hmm. uh, I go to the markets with them. And then we, I also take feedback. I love to get feedback from my staff. Yeah, um, all of them. The, they're on the floor with the with the customers, yeah. and um, I, and also from customers. Sometimes they say, "Oh, we saw this line," and so we go and try and find it. Yeah. You know, you are perhaps the chicest woman in Charleston. Of course, you always look fantastic. 
Um, you know, what is what's hot right now? I feel like as women, sometimes, especially, I don't know, nowadays, it seems like so much is in, right? Like there's so many different trends and so many styles. But for the quintessentially low country woman, what are you still seeing? What's the consistency? Is it still the big sleeves, still the patterns, the maxi dresses? You know, what trends do you watch? Yes. Um, well, you do see everything yeah. it's it's um i will say the biggest trend right now and this would probably be more mostly younger women yeah. uh younger than i am certainly um shorter dresses yeah. but i'm wearing a maxi dress now i wear lots of midis and there are tons of them all over the place still i was at an event on tuesday and i would say last year probably the same event was uh, maxis and and midis this year they were probably about half of them in little short dresses. Cute, cute, cute. Um, but but the the longer dresses are still in. I will never never let those go because yeah. I need to be wearing the longer dresses. <laughs> I, I but, like the longer ones too. <laughs> yeah, but I I think the the sleeves of the puffiness has mm -hmm. come down on some of them. Mm -hmm. Some designers that's what they're known for and yeah. that won't change. But yeah. you know that they they have their very loyal. Uh, buyers and our customers who are there, those same buyers, yeah. they're the same ones. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me some of the brands that you can find at Rhodes Boutique. What are some of your customers' favorites? Uh, well, today I'm actually wearing Cleabella, which is yeah. a very popular, popular line. Um, great colors, great patterns, great prices too. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking about big sleeves. Um, Hunter Bell, Hunter Bell is, is a fabulous line yeah. that we carry and it, and it appeals to all ages, um, sizes, shapes, um, styles. Uh, then Tyler Bow is one that is a really very popular one across across the line as well. Elliot, uh, Lauren. Um, uh, Oliphant is one of my favorites. Oliphant is mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. I wear yeah. that a lot. Shared in French. Mm -hmm. um, La Roque. Um, uh, we also sell uh, Victoria Dunn, who's a local designer. Right. Well, she's from Canada, but she lives here yeah. in Mount Pleasant. Um, uh, we sell her uh, her line and um, a, a, a ton. We have so many lines. I think we probably have more inventory than any uh, ladies boutique that's not a department store in Charleston. Right. You really do. And you sell so much of that in person, obviously, with your excellent staff. People can also shop online, though, right? They can see something. Oh, absolutely. Or yes. the website. Have you seen the shift, especially since COVID, of those online sales increasing as most boutiques have? Um, they do, but you yeah. know, it's interesting. Um, you have to really, you have to understand that people still like to try on clothes. 100%. They really do. Yeah. yeah. And they like to touch it and they like to feel it. So yeah, we do a whole lot of orders. Uh, some of them come back just because things just don't fit, right. but that's right. part of the business. So, yeah. Yeah. In 1996, it was Southern Women to Women magazine. Now it's Charleston Women Magazine. Charleston Women is all about strong, capable, confident, hardworking, nurturing, determined, dedicated, and inspiring women. Our readers are business owners, entrepreneurs, mothers, sisters, wives, and grandmothers. Pick up your copy of Charleston Women Magazine at Charleston Area, Harris Teeters, and Food Lions. Charleston Women Magazine. We are Charleston Women. You're listening to the Charleston Women Podcast. So how did you get into this? Because when I look at your sheet, and I, I know you'd mentioned this to me before, but I, I didn't know all the details. You come from a totally different background. You were in finance and auditing. So how do you go yes. from that to yes. beautiful boutiques? I imagine knowing numbers, the business side certainly helped you grow and scale rapidly. But how did you make that shift? Well, when I was in college, well, when I went to college, I started out as a theater drama major. Yeah. I sang, yeah, I, I, I don't sing with any groups or anything anymore, okay. just in the congregation at church. But uh, I used to and was I loved to, to do um, theater. Uh, and about somewhere halfway along the way, a, a, an uncle of mine suggested, he said I was very good at analytics. I don't remember how he knew that, but that I uh, should look at um, uh, accounting. I had done some part-time work in retail mm -hmm. um, and part-time work at um, um, South Carolina National Bank. That tells you how old I am. But um, in, when I was in high school, 
and in college, and he thought that that would be a good good way to go. Uh, changing direction just because it was more practical. And of course, I wanted to be practical. So yeah. I went into that and got a degree in accounting um, and, and auditing. And that's actually what brought me to Charleston. I took a, the, a job as the internal audit director for the South Carolina National Bank. Way, wow. way long time ago. Yeah, 40, 43 years ago. Wow. So how, when did you decide to shift from that to owning a boutique? Well, I actually was um, not doing any work uh, outside of being a mom right. and a wife, which is a very big job. My husband was a pediatrician. He uh, decided he wanted to um, have some fun with a, a fly shop, a fishing tackle and fly shop. Yep. And he, being a pediatrician, he really didn't have all that much time. Yeah. So he needed a little help. And with my um, accounting background, I got involved. And marketing, I was I had a marketing marketing uh, degree as well, um, and I'd always loved sales aspect of things. I also sold some real estate um, when he was in residency, done all kinds of things. But um, it, long story short, was I got involved and in, and literally did not know a thing about fishing, did not know a thing about that side of retail. Right, I did not know anything about fly fishing, which was a yeah. specialty. The store so i had to learn yeah and and that that got me into the retail world but being a woman um i wanted things that were more that i liked so i brought in more of the women's apparel um most of that was more casual than mm -hmm. nicer yeah. nice gifts things like right. that so we did monogramming I, I mean i remember going there years ago to get like bags monogrammed and stuff is that correct yeah yeah. yeah, we the the embroidery uh, boutique became uh, actually a on its own out of nowhere yeah. uh, because all of our customers had a boat at the time. Everyone wanted to have their name of their boat on their shirt, on their backpacks, on their towels, on their whatever. Okay. And <laughs> hats, hats, fishing teams, all that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, started the embroidery boutique mm -hmm. and um and then it just evolved. I, that became my focus. Um, and uh, and now it's Rube's uh, Home and Gift. Wow. You know, how... I, so I remember we shot a, a TV segment there when you guys first opened, right? That's right. Yeah. Right? And it wasn't that long ago. And what's astounding to me is you see so many boutiques, it, it's not make it. We'll get just cut to the taste. Like, it is hard. It's competitive. And you have had such massive and rapid success and growth. Um, how how have you done it? What is your secret? What are you willing to share with our listeners? You know, I mean, I'm sure even you have to sit back and say, I can't believe what we've done in just a few years. Well, I'll have to be honest and say there are a lot of days that I I don't think I can do it. So there's, there's being honest with yourself. Yeah. Uh, but also I have an amazing staff, um, really wonderful people who love what they do. Uh, I believe in being passionate about what you're doing and sharing it. And I have shared what I do with them and they share that back with me. Mm -hmm. They, they are the secret, honestly. Mm -hmm. The other part is going back to what we were talking about earlier is just true customer service. You have to have the people to do that. It takes takes time. Mm -hmm. um, and you're giving them, we're doing all kinds of things to try and um, meet their needs mm -hmm. and make them happy. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it really becomes a, 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 con a constant battle with the balance of mm -hmm. what is the trend, what mm -hmm. is selling, what what is what our customer wants because those are not all the always the same thing. But so right. staying staying attuned to listening to your customer. What do they come in and look for? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're big Instagrammers. Oh, not all of them. They just know mm -hmm. what they like. Right. Right. You know, you also are very connected with Charleston. You know, what year did you move here? You said when you moved. Here, I moved here in 1982. Okay. Is your husband yeah. from here? Yes, he grew up here. Yeah. Okay. He was so a you're, you're, I was yeah. going to say you're very connected, and <laughs> you've been here yeah. for a, a long bit. time. Yeah. And I feel like you're always giving back to our community. You're always a part of so many fundraisers, etc. Is that you know just a part of your business model? You have such a big heart that you do all that for a community. No, thank you. Um, it it just 
is when you have people coming in and saying, oh, we're big shoppers and we know they are customers and we're having a, a little fundraiser for the school. Can you donate something? Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you, you do. It's a you give you give and take. It's mm -hmm. it's we want to be participating and help everybody succeed in whatever it is that they're doing, mm -hmm. uh, particularly women's events. Um, we've done a lot of things over the years, um, and that's just so much fun. We did a little uh, bazaar uh, on Monday, mm -hmm. um, all women, very, very, very noisy, but so <laughs> much fun. Yeah, you, you know, you just, you want to participate. You want to be part of things. Sometimes in retail, the only time you see people is when you're in the store and yeah. they come to see you. So when you get out and do these things, you get to yeah. be part of what's going on yeah. in the city as opposed to in those four walls. Right. It sounds like that's what you love most about the job is connecting with people. Am I right? I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You couldn't what, make people happy if you didn't. <laughs> right. Right. You know, what yeah. do you like? What do you dislike about the job? You know, I love the honesty that some days you struggle and feel like I can't do this anymore. We all have those moments. Um, you know, what what is hard for you? Well, um, getting out of your comfort zone, you just have to make yourself do it. There are plenty yeah. of times that I just I don't feel like I have the the knowledge technology has changed so much. Sure. Um, you've been a big help with us with um, with social media and real making with um, with your um, um, teaching and uh, finding folks that can that can fill the void there because I certainly don't have the those strengths. Right. Those are not okay. my skills. But um, but finding the the talent to do that can be you know difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't I don't like it when I have to go find someone new. <laughs> right. Because right. because you think you've got it all. Yeah. Um, uh, your ducks in a row and everybody's all set and good and then something changes and you sure. have to you have to make changes. Yeah. But the beauty of, of this life um, is that there's always someone new that I can get to meet, mm -hmm. um, bring yeah. in a mentor or they mentor me, however, it, whichever way it works, yeah. um, that you're you're always you have to be willing to take the the not so good mm -hmm. um, and and turn it into something wonderful. Right. How large is your staff? You have a lot of ladies working. It's all women, right? Uh, I have one young man. I have one young man. I, yeah. I don't think I've met him. That's wonderful. Yeah, Tiffany's, how, Tiffany's how many son, people actually. do you have? Right now, believe it or not, we have 30, but a lot of them are part-time. Yeah, but that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to someone who is maybe like you and is on this career path and is not that passionate about it and she wants to make a shift to take a leap to try to do something else? What would you tell that person? do it <laughs> yeah, that's find what you find it is find yeah. what you like mm -hmm. if you don't like it then you're probably not going to be able to put on that smiley happy face yeah and do it um there's there's plenty of people that are very duty driven yeah i am a little bit mostly i'm driven by what i enjoy doing yeah. now with you know with my children okay duty but yeah. <laughs> now that they're grown, right. not as much. Now right. I just enjoy them. But um, but but yeah, you have you you have to enjoy it. Yeah. You know, take that passion and and share it. Go go right. out there and and do it. Yeah. How do you juggle it all? Because now you're a grandmother. How many grandchildren do you have right now? I have three granddaughters three. and another one coming in May. Yeah. So, really? Who's having yeah. a baby? McNair's having her third. No way. Congrats yeah. to McNair. That's Thank wonderful. You. Thank so how you. do you, how do you balance the store being a mother, a grandmother now? How do you juggle it all? Well, the one who gets um, the least amount of time is my husband, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but he's he's retired and very busy, too. So yeah. uh, I, I just, you know, I stay very, very busy. But also when it comes to something with my children or grown children, that is, and grandchildren, mm -hmm. um, I, I make sure I'm available to them and I can be flexible. I've got a lot of wonderful staff. Mm -hmm. I delegate as much as I can. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah. I can't, I don't, the store does not depend on me being on the floor mm -hmm. um, a long time ago. That was the case, but it is not now. That's why I have 30 people that work for me. Yeah. Yeah. What does your husband say when the, in the beginning it was his passion project or side hustle and you kind of took it on to now you've built this brand of two stores? What does he say? Uh, he he just mostly says, well, like everything, she just took it over. 
know, <laughs> bossy, but, but, um, and, and to a small degree, that was true, but I didn't, I didn't look at it that way. I looked at it as what, what were the opportunities that I could learn and the skills that I could learn and people that I could meet um, and the challenges. Um, I didn't know what Excel spreadsheets were for a long time. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is next for Rhodes Boutique and Home and Gift? What, what do you see five years from now? Well, I hope we will continue to do what we are doing now and continue to grow uh, in the West Ashley area. I do not plan to open any more stores, right. yeah. but, you know, um, who knows? You never know what opportunity may may uh, lie ahead. And of course, that's something I would have to think long and hard about if we were to do something else. But I continuing to um, develop our staff mm-hmm. um, and the services that are in that we do in house grow them as much as we can yeah. have uh, have staff be really well equipped. Mm-hmm. Does do your house, do. does your house look like Rhodes home and gift? <laughs> not, not <laughs> as like much as I would whose like. Children have no shoes. Like, do you walk into beautiful place settings <laughs> or are you closet. just so busy? <laughs> My closet looks like Rhodes boutique only there not as pretty. <laughs> mine's, a, mine's a little overstuffed, but, um, but my kitchen, my table does when we set the table, when I set the table yeah. for events, um, yeah, I have all the beautiful things, but I also have my, my personal, um, sure porcelain uh, patterns that I that I'm going to use I've had them up and they were wedding gifts and I love that gifts for my mother-in-law and my father-in-law who passed away and and it, it helps me remember them they're very yeah. special and then you just bring in Franny to help <laughs> yes, right. yes. Put everything yeah. Up. yeah absolutely um, last question before you go it has been an absolute joy talking to you well, do you, you. It's, a, it's a weird question. I always ask this because I believe when you have successful women, driven women such as yourself, it's fascinating to me how they start their day. Some people sleep in, some people wake up early, some people work out, some people meditate. Do you have anything that like sets you on a path for success daily? Prayer. Prayer. First thing. Yeah. Simple as that. That's and then it. I check my phone. And then- <laughs> <laughs> You're good though. How disciplined are you? Prayer and then the phone. And then is it a cup of coffee? Uh, then I get my hot tea. Yes. Then you get the hot tea. There you go. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I should have said this in the beginning. I apologize, but I, I just assume everyone knows where Rhodes is. Please tell our listeners and our viewers where they can find sure. and how they can shop. Yes. Both stores are in South Windermere Center. Other people know it as South Windermere Shopping Center, yeah. uh, right at the corner of Folly Road and Windermere Boulevard, uh, West Ashley. And uh, we are 82, I mean, excuse me, 92 and 84 Folly Road uh, on the end uh, next to Half Moon Outfitters. And then the other the other end is Earth Care. So we're right in there. Beautiful, beautiful, wonderful local shopping center. Right. And people can also find you online, Facebook and Instagram, Rose Boutique, also Rhodes Home and Gift, and then RhodesBoutique.com. Yes. That's right. Anything else you'd like to add that I forgot to ask during our time together? I, I think this has been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I do so much with my staff and they are the ones that customers see when they walk in the door. Yeah. So it's a little hard for me to um, to talk about myself so much, but yeah. I appreciate the opportunity and hopefully hopefully it helps someone else take that, um, take some advice and, and get out there and try something new. Right. And I appreciate the opportunity to get to know your story a little more. And I think it will certainly inspire someone else. And, you know, you need to toot your own horn and tell people what you've done. So I love that this podcast helps celebrate women and, you know, the accomplishments of their business. So we are thrilled to have you you. today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. This has been Caroline Rhodes with Rose Boutique and Home and Gift on the Charleston Women Podcast. Thanks for spending time with Charleston Women Podcast. Please like us and follow us on whatever platform you're using to access Charleston Women Podcast.